Hi everybody, so um, my name is Justin Coffey and uh, I'm a uh, dev lead at uh, uh, Criteo and I'm going to give you a, um, a little talk about what we're doing with Parquet, uh, why we're doing it, and uh, um, what some of our findings were uh, in the process. So first of all, what's Criteo? Uh, I'll give you a little background. Uh, we're a French company and um, our business is basically uh, selling clicks. So we do a lot of uh, banner displays, and we do something called banner uh, display retargeting. Uh, many of you may know what that is. You get followed around on the internet by things you've seen on websites. Uh, maybe it annoys you. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Basically, what we do, though, is we, uh, we purchase inventory uh, on a display basis, uh, on a CPM basis. And then we um, try to predict uh, the likelihood that somebody's going to click, and then we can uh, uh, choose uh, the best inventory to display to that user um, that's the most, most likely to be profitable for us. Uh, we handle 1.4 million uh, requests per second across our DCs on average. Uh, we have about 30 billion events logged every day and imported into HDFS. Uh, 2.5 billion displays and 840 million unique users touched uh, in a month. Those aren't our users. You guys have more valuable users. We just, we're just visiting. <laughs> the real problem for us is that we have about 70 BI analysts who want to play with all that data. And so some other, I like this slide. Uh, this gives a little context. I think many people in this room can identify with this. So the rate of change of key elements in an analytic stack. We've got new users coming in, playing with the data. We've got increasing data. We've got feature complexity in the product. We have the user's expected performance uh, uh, requirements, and then we've got us. So. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, for us. We've got our production servers producing a bunch of data, getting it all shoved into uh, Hadoop. That's all handled by our HPC team. Then we come in, and we've wrote some scripts and some plumbing to uh, process all that data, um, run a bunch of ETL jobs. Uh, we do a lot of work with Hive. We do a lot of work with cascading. Uh, we shove that into Vertica, we shove that into SQL Server databases, we do some reporting off of it. Um, we've got uh, now a Rollup cube uh, connected on to Vertica, and then we expose all that stuff to uh, BI and business users for them to access it. So that's what we, that's our, our basic lay of the land. And so why are we, why are we interested in Parquet? Basically because columnar storage engines save polar bears because of all the wonderful reasons that Julian just mentioned. Uh, we read only the data that we need, and when you do that, you save polar bears, and we've measured it. Uh, so that's fine. RC file, ORC, uh, that's, those are live out there as well. Why didn't we just uh, stick with that? Both are actually quite good. Uh, we, have, we have about a petabyte of RC file in production. It works great. Um, but the problem is, is it's completely embedded in Hive. Um, so we've, we have a horrible hack to uh, get it working in cascading where we, we bring Hive along with our cascading jobs. So that's, that's not nice. Uh, to date, Parquet supports, uh, as already mentioned, we've got native MapReduce, cascading, scalding, pig, Spark, Impala, Hive, we did that. And uh, of course, there's a lot more coming. Uh, there's Pojo support. There's all kinds of fun stuff. So um, we're really excited about that. And Parquet is polar bear approved. So um, in, our, in our world, uh, we've tried to figure out how to best uh, deploy Parquet. So what we came to uh, realize is that, in fact, the most important uh, uh, indicator of performance in our cluster is file size. So the smaller we can get the files, the faster it's going to be for us. And so we see that here, CPU time on the cluster versus uh, uh, data set size. And it's pretty, pretty obvious. Unfortunately, that means gzip wins. And actually, what you'll see is you'll see that um, RC file and gzip is actually the fastest. This is our cluster environment. We're not entirely sure why. We think that our cluster is ridiculously I.O. bound, and so we have lots of spare CPU cycles kicking around. We do see, however, that Parquet uh, wins out in the um, compression battle with uh, RC file. So we get pretty equivalent execution time from RC file, uh, uh, between RC file and Parquet. Uh, using gzip, but we save a little bit of uh, space. Uh, earlier, we also benched um, 
parquet with uh, against um, ORC with the uh, TBC data, and uh, we actually saw that parquet was was consistently slightly faster than ORC uh, using Snappy. And actually, if we go back here, you'll see that as we go up the um, as we go up the uh, uh, the file size, we see that uh, Parquet and Snappy Parquet Snappy is actually faster than RC file Snappy, um, and LZO is a little bit slower um, in some situations. But so we see that Parquet, when working with more data than um, than uh, uh, or when working with a, a more efficient compression uh, algorithm versus RC file working with that same more efficient compression algorithm, Parquet actually does win. But for us, we're still super I.O. bound, and so getting that file size down as small as possible uh, is, is the winner for us. So um, going back to this slide and then moving on. So how are we moving one uh, petabyte uh, from RC file to uh, Parquet? Uh, it's actively used data, so this isn't something we can do. Uh, um, we have to be transparent about it. Uh, our solution was actually just to ensure that we had an extra petabyte kicking around and we should copy it. Uh, we thought about being smarter, doing in-place uh, replacement, things like that, but we've got the space, we have, this, we have the CPU time, so we're just doing it that way. Um, we have encountered a few issues along the way. Uh, we use complex types in our logs. Uh, there's no cascading complex type support yet. So that means that we're starting off with uh, producing data that we already produced with Hive, um, uh, uh, starting off with that data set. And we're looking at uh, trying to contribute the uh, complex type patch to uh, uh, cascading support. We also had a lot of out of memory exceptions uh, once we actually started scaling the jobs up. So we were working, we were benchmarking with lots of uh, small data sets, and we said, okay, well now we actually need to get this out into production, and so let's scale it up. And we were getting lots of uh, um, OOM exceptions. And what we realized was uh, when you're using Hive to generate the data, you've got a partition uh, uh, scheme. Hive is actually going to uh, send, by default, random data to the, to the reducers. And those reducers are then going to open up one file for each of the partitions. Um, and so that was causing 90, in this case, was causing 96 different files to try to get opened. And the, um, uh, parquet uh, uh, output uh, format uh, writer overhead was causing the uh, explosion in memory usage and causing everything to crash. So we just added a distribute by clause to um, to the uh, the uh, to the hype statements, uh, creating the tables and using the um, uh, the partition keys in the uh, distribute by, and that solved the problem. Uh, we still had some out of out of memory exceptions. Going into production, uh, we were going to go into production despite our benchmark numbers with uh, LZO or Snappy uh, because we anticipate uh, moving forward with Impala. And so we were expecting that with what we had seen from other benchmarks that once we were actually executing, uh, reading this data with Impala, we would actually get quite a lot of um, benefit from that. I figured, okay, we can, Hive can be 10% slower than it might otherwise be. We don't really care. Uh, but with the 1.2 branch in uh, um, CDH 4.6, there's a little bit more memory usage, and so in some production jobs, it was difficult to get them tuned to work correctly with LZO or Snappy, and so GZIP seemed to be a little bit more uh, uh, memory efficient, and so we went with that. Uh, the bonus there is, of course, we get actually a little bit faster execution time. For now, when we do deploy Impala, we may revisit this decision. Well, certainly we'll have 1.3, and it'll, be, it'll, it'll work. So uh, that's our, um, our current uh, 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 environment with uh, Parquet. Uh, the migration's in progress. As soon as we get the complex type support in, we'll be uh, into cascading. We'll be moving um, even more data towards Parquet. Uh, we're really happy with the ability to use any kind of execution engine we want. Great. <laughs>